just this morning, we took the bull who's been basically just in our catch pen area, barn lot, we call it, whatever. Had a roll of hay in there for him. Had Lucy, the Jersey cow, in there with him for companionship just this morning. So five, six hours ago, put him in this little paddock, which actually runs all the way up by the house. Plenty of grazing, probably the best grass on the farm right now for a reason that I'm about to explain. And what do I do? I come home, the gates are busted wide open. Um, I'm sure I can see the, the chain hanging on the one gate there. Guarantee the snap is broken. He busted back out. So I'd almost convinced myself. I was like, you know what? We may end up keeping him because he had gotten out of the barn lot even a few times and he had been on his best behavior about the last 10 or 11 days, had not gotten out. But now here he has pushed his way back in with the cows. So next week we're probably headed to the sale barn with him. I know there's at least one cow that does not have a calf actually nursing her that also tested open. Other, all our other open ones have uh, calves still weaning them that they calved. Um, most of them late in the spring, so we're not quite ready to sell them yet. But anyway, he's gone. This is it for him. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit mad. All right, so there he is. That, that nice fellow, we'll try to keep this uh, family friendly. But his one redeeming quality, and I shouldn't praise him yet until I make sure it does work, is that he will follow a bucket of feed. So I'm gonna see if I can get him up back up into the barn lot. And I thought he'd been he'd been having we've been giving him a little feed every day, but he had essentially been eating that old roll of hay. I thought well he'll enjoy getting out here getting some grass. But just can't keep his mind off the ladies can't behave and so he's gonna earn himself a trip to the sale barn where instead of living a life of luxury breeding cows for two months out of the year and lounging for the other ten he's probably gonna end up on somebody's plate here sooner rather than later uh, I don't know maybe somebody at the sale barn that'll pick him up for a breeding bull but uh, more than likely he's gonna be in a hamburger patty soon huh. All right, so as you can see right there, he did cooperate. Been here with these few cows. Now, I really need to get that one. There's one cow, number 806, that she calved in December and still didn't get bred back. She was open. So, the others that, that, that are open, most of them were like May calvers, a um, few April. So can't really, um, or don't, I don't want to sell its pears. And so, uh, you know, selling them and their calf. So a little, little young, ideally to wean those calves. So we're gonna have to hang on to them for a bit longer. But if I'm gonna make a trip to the sale bar with him, cause it's an hour or two away, depending on which one we go to. Um, don't really want to take him by himself so make the best use of that time next week try to haul her too if I can get her in here but I think I'll just see her down here there so I'll have to see if we can get her headed back up this way out of breath Woo. sorry I just that would have been good footage me jumping fences a few cows jumping fences had all of it but the one we wanted is in here now. Got a couple that jumped back into the wrong pasture. Whoo, on a low spot. All right, coming down about 1.30. That's her over there in this pen over right here. Furthest one over there, she's a, you know, these Hereford cows are almost entirely very, very, very good disposition. She's the one anomaly of the Herefords. She's the one that I mentioned, if you watched the last one, when I was going through the results and I saw that she was open, and I was like, good, that was the one. I needed very little excuse to get rid of her. You know, like I say, she, she is a little smaller, but really no excuse, she calved in December, like December 22nd, and didn't breed back with the spring calving cows. So she had uh, absolutely no excuse and no reason to keep her. So. 
plan is to keep her and blueberry pinned up unfortunately today is wednesday it will be next wednesday before i can go to the sale barn but uh i thought about going today and just going ahead and taking him um you know kind of like i said I, I thought you know what i might end up keeping him but now if he if he's gonna present that much of a problem where i can't even let him out of the barn lot or he's running through a fence or breaking through gates to get back with the cows i'm not i'm not just not going to deal with that so well, that'll be just be one less animal to have to feed through the winter and we'll pick up a another bull next spring all right so now we just have to let these cows out without letting him out <sighs> never a dull moment you get back son you stay girls are leaving you're staying you're gonna stay with that gal over there okay so now should just be as simple as letting these cows out he and her are caught albeit in separate pens right now but got them where i can keep them up here secured he has gotten out of this pen two or three times once i know what he did he had um, actually pushed the wire panels which is our old fence here too he pushed these wire panels and pulled staples out but you can see staples backing out in some of those spots didn't use barb staples there that was a big mistake when we built that but we fixed that spot um i really don't know where he had gotten out one of the times maybe the first time he actually got out of this pen um, unless he had pushed it off um only i can figure is he may have pushed it off those posts but it wasn't noticeable until the second time he did it i really don't know it doesn't matter he's back in here now um if we can hold him for another seven days he'll be gone we get here to see exactly what the bull did to get out the chain still hanging there snap came completely off i'm sure he just broke it these cheap snaps they uh these are like little silver ones yeah there's part of it there uh they're just cheap though and i can't find the like the brass ones at the hardware store i don't know if it's like everything else now yeah there's just a snap so yeah of course yeah you break one side of it the other side is rendered useless because of the spring but i can't find the good brass ones uh i don't know if it's like everything else in the world right now supply chain issues um thanks to the virus or whatever in the heck's going on or probably more likely thanks to our handling or reaction to the virus but anyway we're actually gonna leave those gates open now so the cows can go in here and graze because the bull isn't going to be doing it all right so the primary thing or what we thought we were going to really be talking about to start off this video before we ran into the, the recurring issue with the bull was army worms we have had a problem with them um and i apologize as recently as yesterday we were seeing worms out here i really don't have any to show you um i just can't find any right now which is great it's a good thing although there's a moth there i really can't say because i'm not an entomologist if that is the moth of the army worm but we had a really bad problem with them a really bad issue about a month ago and the way their life cycle follows it's usually about a month later that they'll come back um i knew even from looking at the pastures yesterday we didn't have or at least they weren't yet doing near as much damage now as they did a month ago it sounded like we had them worse a month ago than anybody else did that, that was right when i was sick and uh you know i didn't get out here and, and film anything or, or really do anything about it which i'm not sure that there really was much that would have made sense for us to do when i found them but i hope you can tell in the video which of course they'll selectively feed on certain types of grass it's fairly bare and brown here you can really see over and through here but we've got a lot of different grasses out here we had we had originally planted all that uh sorghum sedan grass or sudex in this bottom and we had grazed it back pretty hard probably harder than we should have and then they really latched on to those plants and ate them up and then the other thing they really seemed to like which again i mean you can tell i mean this just looks dead um was signal grass which there's a little coming back there which makes actually a pretty decent forage but apparently for the army worm as well so 
just another one of the challenges we face is kind of you know as cattle farmers or grass farmers you know you think about you know you worry about well i guess in the cows just do they get sick or you know do the cows get out you know do you have problems like that do you, do you have an issue with cows don't worry about you worry about all those things and for the grass you worry about was well, it going to rain you know we're going to time our fertilizer right are we uh, do we need to spray you know do we have a lot of weeds and then you, you, kind of one thing we don't think about as much as we should especially in the fall or the late summer is army horse you know you can really kind of appreciate and hear that all this is signal grass and uh it's starting to put back out but they they really decimated it um we had again i don't want you to make it make you think that you know this was shoulder high sudex and then the worms you know came in you know it was a plague of biblical proportions or anything like that but they they did significant damage and harm to this pasture you see right there you got some feathers we actually um first time i've seen this uh, i don't know they may have been out here a couple other mornings maybe where we can't see them easily from the house and whatnot but had a bunch of geese there was like 20 or so canada geese out here and i feel pretty certain they were eating the worms now i don't Maybe they ate every one of them. Um, it would appear like that as I look now because I just really can't see any. But you can see just looking at these leaves, the way they're eaten. And I mean, this is these are leaves that obviously they, they didn't finish off. And then, I mean, you see in a lot of places, it's just stems left. But the, uh, again, I, I think I mentioned it, but the second wave, I'm really hearing more people talk. There's another goose feather there. Um, is when they're really seeming to be the worst which would kind of make sense and i don't know if we don't have them quite as bad because we have so little forage out here <laughs> that, that they've gone on to greener pastures but yeah when i was growing up we had a lot of problems with them in bermuda grass my my grandfather and my dad and my uncle all had a lot of bermuda grass for hay and i guess my dad and my uncle still do and i think they they sprayed some bermuda grass for them yesterday they traditionally we would if you had some hay ready to cut we would just get in there and, and mow it down cut it and that essentially ends your problem uh, i think the, the ground they were spraying yesterday just wasn't wasn't nearly big enough to mow and so just went ahead and sprayed it but um yeah like i said i hate well i don't hate I, i'm for the sake of our pastures i'm glad i can't find any to show you um for the sake of the video i hate that i can't see any or i don't see any so and i would go pop by one of their hay fields but i guess we could hopefully see a bunch of dead worms but another thing i was talking to my uncle about this morning planning on getting this ground ready here just in the next few weeks to plant our perennial mix that we're gonna we're gonna start growing in this bottom uh fescue orchard grass and red and white clovers um we were just discussing just burning this down just just you know with a glyphosate or roundup and then no tilling it versus actually coming in here tilling this ground up and i think i think we're going to try to till it up we're just you know trying to put it in a permanent pasture like that you really want to do everything you can to get as good a chance as possible to get a good stand this you know really flat bottom ground it's not highly erodible or anything um dude, we just haven't gotten any rain anyway so it's not gonna all road if it never rains again which it'll rain at some point but kind of making plans for that i think our ideal planting dates in this area for like fescue anyway is pretty much now through mid-october so it's today's august 25th it'll be a few days of course before we get this posted but kind of a target of i'd say middle of next month because um, one, I'd really like for to utilize this for grazing as much as we can. The other, the two perennial pastures we have on this farm are, are short right now. They, they thankfully did not really have any significant armyworm damage. Um, they seem to really be after that sudex and that signal grass and our perennial pastures here mainly. Some Bermuda, which again, they, they will eat that up, but but not a, enough of a pure stand where it really looked like they got into it. A lot of Dallas grass this time of year. Um, of course, you got clovers and fescue for a cool season. But anyway, just a, a little talk about army worms and kind of the challenge they create. We, uh, again, I'm not a, an entomologist or anything by any means, but one of the things we deal with. And another thing, like, I think, well, couldn't you do something to kill them? 
yeah just like they sprayed on the hay fields there are things you can spray i think in a grazing application you do have to make sure that the animals are off of it for a set number of days you know just following the label instructions and we could have done that because we do have other pastures here that we could have moved them to but then it's always you know are they over a threshold where it would make economical sense to do that and i don't know that it was and then just the logistics again when they were really bad out here was kind of when i was was down and not really able to do a whole lot and so i mean it just wasn't going to happen and and really by the time i found them they had done enough damage already that it was kind of like well you know probably should have sprayed a week 10 days ago and then you would have been doing some good but anyway those girls back out there grazing we're going to take their boyfriend and their friend to the sale barn next week but we got to get up here and put some mineral out too all right so get a little mineral put out the old vitafirm heat and it has really been put to the test or will continue to be for the next few days we've been under a heat advisory essentially from like 11 a.m to 8 p.m every day um, heat index consistently in a couple digits they've even uh know some of the high school and youth sporting events have had to be canceled or postponed as a result of being so hot but yeah the vitafirm heat it uh I guess kind of the name implies is a mineral designed to work really well when it is very very hot i guess the name could also potentially imply it's good for keeping them warm when it's cold but now it's the opposite is to feed when it is hot to keep them cool it has i think two different ingredients that really works on that um has a prebiotic they call amifirm kind of helps with their digestibility and keeps them grazing encourages them to graze more which is really important like in our stocker steers because we we want them on their feet grazing as much as possible um, and it also has capsaicin which is I believe uh comes from chili peppers which is funny because as you smell it it really does almost kind of smell like the pepper or chili powder um but that works, I think, uh, as a vasodilator, just to keep them cool. Um, I might not have that exactly right, but yeah. Just one of the management practices, tools. Which again, a little more important for the stockers, in my opinion. When we feed it to the cows, yeah. As you say, it encourages them to eat more, which actually this bottom, those uh, army worms didn't, just for whatever reason, in this smaller field, they didn't bother it quite as bad. I don't know if it was a little differences in Kind of the grass species but actually you can see a little bit of sudex still popping through all those essentially weeds out there but um yeah we uh try to keep them cool keep them grazing uh, keep them happy so hopefully the last uh, i won't be the last task for today but the last thing i really have on the to-do list moving the grain bin the mobile grain bin we uh our round bin is out of feed uh, we got some of that yellow bin, but went ahead and called the feed truck. Back up just a little bit. And have them deliver a little feed either end of this week or first of next week. So we can go ahead and get this bin. I can get that on there. Moved. And uh, let them fill it up with feed. Uh, let's say this thing's empty is pretty lightweight. Oh yeah. Full of feed, the pioneer probably wouldn't be up for the task, but empty is no big deal. Alright, so I got that unhooked about where we want it. These are gonna be filling up the old bin as well. Still that one's probably still a half to two-thirds full, so not really out of feed, but we're feed, starting to feed more and more of those stalker steers. And I think my brother's about out, so they're gonna bring him some feed. It's just convenient if they're coming this direction and bring us both some. We, uh, we normally use that mobile bin. We keep corn in it during the winter. That's kind of why I'm still down here at this barn where we feed out our, our finishing steers, but they uh, 
this way we can fill it up and I'll actually probably take it down to the other farm where I'm not having to haul as much feed down there every day. We'll just have it already there with us. We're gonna get this barn lot closed off, gates latched and whatnot. Let that bull and cow out. Well, they can use the water trough and the hay and whatnot, but yeah, they're gonna be taking a trip to town next weekend. I'm trying to remember, like every third or fourth week I have Friday off. I hope it's not next week because there's one sale on Tuesday, one on Wednesday that I could hit. I don't know. If I'm off on Friday, I'll probably just take them real early one morning, get there as soon as they um, start accepting and receiving cattle. And can I? All right, so I apologize. The GoPro battery died while I was filming there talking about taking the, the cow and bull to the sale next week. And then I pulled out my phone, as I'm doing right now, and thought I was filming with it. But now here we are three days later, and just this morning as I was putting videos on the computer, realized... I never hit record, so I apologize for that. So we're now fast forwarded three days ahead. It's Saturday morning out here. Just checking on the stocker steers as we do each day, getting them a little feed. Uh, and I believe just like we were last Saturday um, when I ended that video. Getting things done early this morning because getting ready to go play softball. But um, still planning on selling the bull and the cow. Like I said, that, that was Wednesday. It's Saturday now. Next week, they're going to the sale barn. Uh, we're going to get these boys actually moved out of this pasture here in just a second into um, just the next one. A um, couple of reasons. One, they don't have this, this grass just completely obliterated, but about time to move them anyway. Um, good grass in the next one. And looks like we have a hurricane in the Gulf, I believe it's Ida, that is going to make landfall, I think, tomorrow night or Monday morning. And they... It looks like almost guaranteed rain for us Monday and Tuesday, although we, we certainly don't. Um, there, no, there's no guarantees when it comes to rain for us. But uh, really, of course, we feel for those people in the path and, and pray that there's no you know, real destruction. But we are thankful for the rain that it, it is apparently going to bring us. But they're going to get these boys, let them clean up what little bit of feed we brought them, and then see if we can get them to follow us down the hill and through the next gate. And I guess I should point out as I was making the, the, the rain, um, the issue for us moving pastures, this middle pasture is just, you know, we don't have road access immediately off the road into it like we do the other two. And so when they're in this pasture and it does get really muddy, it's just a pain getting back here. It's, it's not impossible. We, we've had to do it plenty of times, but when we feel like it's definitely going to rain and it's about time to move pastures anyway, we'll go ahead and move them on through. Easy to get in and out if it is really muddy. Um, but they should be just about done cleaning up that feed and we'll see if we can get them to follow us. All right, so it looks like they're gonna cooperate as we get up here to the gate, go into new pasture. I still really, as I was driving, especially down the hillside here, good grazing still available to them in there, but good problem to have, you know, when you still got grass in one pasture, be ready to move them to the next. I'll be fine because I'll have to be coming back to this pasture pretty quickly because um, this pasture we're going to is the smallest in terms of acreage area. We'll go ahead and let them through and we'll count them as they go and see if we've, no, it's not everybody because I'm pretty sure we have three or four. They're still trapped in the other end of the place, but that's just the way it is. Be sure we get the bulk of them through here. All right, boys, y'all go on through. Nobody wants to do it. There we go. Generally eager. Grass is always greener on the other side. Right, so we got most of these boys moved. Like a bunch of them are down around the hill there. But good grazing in here. Some good young tender Johnson grass. A lot of Bermuda. Um, some foxtail, which a lot of people think are considered weed in certain circumstances. I do as well, but Good grazing in here, Dallas grass too. So I'm gonna leave these boys to it. Let them turn a little grass into beef. But um, yeah, I guess as we've mentioned, the, of course the Bermuda have not, and you know, I, I better knock on wood, um, or whisper, have not had an army worm problem on this farm. So um, 
again, like a lot of the pastures, it's, you can see a lot of Bermuda in here, but um, it's not a, certainly a pure stand of Bermuda. So I, I don't know if that's the reason why they don't sometimes bother pastures quite as bad as the little hayfield. But yeah, we're gonna get out of here, get back home. So I gotta get the kids fed, get showered and, and head to daughter's softball tournament the rest of the day. But appreciate everybody watching like always. Um, if you have not subscribed, we would really appreciate that. Um, always a thumbs up for the video is appreciated. And we remind you, eat beef and God bless.